You have kids? Sure. How old are your kids? My daughter is, she was born in 68, and my son was born in 73. How did you raise your kids? Religiously, religiously, I'm asking. In no way. You didn't, you said you're secularly Jewish, but you didn't celebrate Hanukkah, Rosh Hashanah, nothing? Nothing. Garnished. And did they celebrate Christmas, American holidays? Well, it's inescapable. You celebrate Christmas right. because you take off from but work. But you said, hey, by the way, we were Jewish. You don't really believe in Santa I think, I think the, Santa the fact Jesus. that we were Jewish was imprinted on us vividly by my parents, by okay. the Holocaust, by the events of history. There's no escaping that, no desire to escape it either. But in terms, of, again, of a religious life, mm -hmm. not even a suggestion. And your kids knew your parents. Oh, yeah. And your parents fled Germany right at the height of... The no, Holocaust. they fled uh, fled Germany in 1932, but for France. Okay. Which was a big mistake. So, right. Well, this must have had some bearing on your religious views and your parents' religion's views. You said that they prayed to the god of music. I didn't or say the arts, they prayed. Or, you know, they believed in the god of... But I know a lot of... Like, I'm Jewish. I've had family, grandparents, aunts and uncles that died in the Holocaust. And I always find it... There's so many Jews that say, I could never believe in God again. Like, it killed my entire family, killed everyone I know. And there's some Jews that somehow become more religious and they cling sure. to that. What, you know, what affected the Holocaust and everything that happened? You're from Germany in the 1940s. Your family was there. What effect did that have on your religion? And then how did that trickle down to your kids? Because your kids not having any religious basis. There's got to be something tying this all together. No, you, you've got to pay more attention to what I'm saying. I didn't say my children have no religious basis. They grew up as Jews, as I grew up. Mm -hmm. They had no religious education, which is quite a different matter. For example, they never went to temple? Never went to temple. They had no bar mitzvah? No bar mitzvah. I did. They didn't. Okay. You see the, you see the tr tradition undergoing a gradual dissolution, which I yeah. think is, is characteristic of the Jewish experience, liberal Judaism. Um, my parents regarded the Holocaust as a confirmation of their Jewish identity. My father always said, the Nazis taught me I was a Jew. Mm -hmm. And he was right. But that doesn't mean he rediscovered a religious faith. It meant he rediscovered the fact that he was a Jew. His, my mother was a Jew. The family was Jewish. My culturally. Far more than culturally. Being Jewish is not a cultural phenomenon. Not, at, at least it's more than that. It's a deep continuity of historical experience and historical memory. My grandfather perished in Auschwitz. Uh, my mother never got over that. And uh, nonetheless, my parents' effort, I'm talking about my parents' effort, to give me a religious education didn't succeed. I did have a bar mitzvah. I still remember my bar mitzvah prayers. But uh, the sad truth of the matter is I found it all excruciatingly boring. And I still do. Mm -hmm. um, I can attest to that. I'm not about to spend a whole lot of time in a temple. Mm -hmm. are, what are your kids now? What are their faith now? Or are they practicing or they're similar to you? We're all secular. All secular. Deeply secular. And we have all of the vices but all of the virtues of a secular identity. That is, we all <clears throat> in some way believe that... Uh, we're self-created, um, that the most important thing uh, in our lives collectively is the autonomy of personality, that the personality exists in order to be satisfied, that uh, our desires have an intrinsic value that are quite independent of what other people believe. Um, I think uh, both my children and I certainly appreciate the fact that to achieve certain things, uh, there's a, a great deal of discipline involved. I'm not talking about hedonism, uh, the desire to lead, lead a life such that you're having a good time all the time. I, I don't think anyone believes in that. Uh, uh, I live in South Beach. There might be some people that disagree with you. I, South Beach, Florida, I guess. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, certainly there are people prepared to say it, mm -hmm. but um, I know very few, very few satisfied hedonists over the age mm. of 30. <laughs> um, the declaration that you live to have a good time all the time, it becomes very wearying after a while. Um, but uh, secularism imposes some severe uh, restraints on how you live. I mean, you cannot rely to an extent, to the extent that it was possible to rely, say, in the 17th or early 18th century, on institutional authorities that at every step of the way guide your footsteps. 
Uh, secularism is the prospect of allowing human beings to create themselves anew in each generation. There's no question about that. And sometimes it's very difficult, sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's exhilarating, but as far as I can see, we are all in the position of someone in a lifeboat uh, wondering whether it would be more practicable to sail the seas in an ocean liner. Well, we don't have an ocean liner anymore. We've got the lifeboat, secularism, if you will. And that has to, uh, that has to be enough. We're always in the process of fiddling with the lifeboat, changing the oar locks, wondering whether we should be sitting in the front or in the back. But fundamentally, we don't have access to an ocean liner, that ma majestic ocean liner of faith that has pretty much disappeared. Do you envy people of faith? No. And why is that? What should I envy them for? So what do you think comes after life? I have no idea. And no idea and not even something you've thought about, you decay, the body breaks down, it's gone. Because some say... No, I've, no, I've no, heard no, no, no. I'm not committing myself to a view that uh, there is no possibility of experience after death. I have no privileged insight into that and no one else does either. Certainly the fact that Every single society in recorded history has had some, sort, some form of intense speculation about the afterlife is significant because it's a deeply, a deeply uh, essential part of human nature to entertain those convictions. Uh, but again, all I can say is I'll know soon enough. <laughs> Please come back and visit us when I uh, sure when will. Happens. You've got to give me your portable what, what, number. What, what, if you enjoyed this short clip, click over here to watch another short clip. And if you want to watch the entire episode, the entire podcast, click here.